Amen, 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 amen. Hey, I'm so thankful that we have the opportunity to pray with you and for you. Uh, I hope you're taking uh, advantage of the, the application for pray, prayer on our app or online or even on the back of your connection card. We do pray over those every single day. And so we want to let you know that we are praying for you and with you and believing for those things. And we are very thankful that we can do so. Amen. Man, I'm thankful for the freedom we have in this country to do so, to meet together in this place, in this way, and be public with our, uh, our faith in Jesus Christ. If we haven't met, my name is Jay, and Celeste and I have the opportunity of leading here at Cornerstone, and we are blessed that you're with us today, and so glad we have an opportunity to worship together. Um, we are just people that are on a journey following Jesus. That is who we are. We are on a journey with Christ. We have not arrived. None of us is perfect. All of us is on that journey with Christ. That's why we use this image that looks like this. You guys got it? There it is. And the reason we use it is because it's such a visual reminder. Every time you see a picture of Jesus and the disciples walking together, you will think of me saying this to you about how we're on a journey with Christ. It's true. That's why, is that all of us are following Jesus. So let's listen to where he wants to lead us and go where he is leading us. Amen. We are people who want to be more like him, to be more like Jesus. That's what we're about. We do that by loving God, making disciples and reaching the world. So Pastor Rich was talking about and being those who give not just here locally. We believe very much in that and compassion, but we also believe in being those who reach out and support those who are reaching out to others across the world in love and in this way in compassion through Convoy. Uh, we also have a new se series and semester of life groups coming up. It's coming up very soon. In fact, next week, we're going to be kicking off those ideas and, and giving you the new opportunity to see the different offerings for this semester. So we're excited for that. Last week, got to be on a call with some of those leaders, and I'm excited. They're offering a lot of great groups. We have connect groups, which are just that, building relationships with each other. We have grow groups, which are making you take a step and grow in your relationship with Christ. And we have serve groups, it means getting involved and serving with your time and your talent as unto the Lord. Let me encourage you, decide to be a part of one of those groups this fall. Let it be a blessing to your life. Engage and build those relationships. It is a blessing, believe me. And I want you to be in those groups because I'm a participant as well. And it's, man, it's a blessing to my life. So it's not something that I'm telling you to do that I'm not doing. We are active in it. I believe in it very, very much. Would you say Amen. Hey, so we are thankful that you're here and welcome. we want to welcome you today to Cornerstone. If you have your Bible, your tablet, your phone, we're looking in the Old Testament today at 1 Samuel and starting in chapter 3. Now today we have an awesome opportunity. Halfway through the sermon, we're going to stop and we're going to dedicate some children unto the Lord today, which is an amazing thing. We're so very excited for that. And we have, a, we have several kids that are going to get dedicated between the two services today, several children. We're excited for those things. It picks up here in scripture in 1 Samuel 3, verse 8. It says, The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he arose and went with Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood calling as, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak for your servant hears. Then the Lord said to Samuel, behold, I'm about to do a new thing in Israel at which the two ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. We're talking today with this idea, speak your servant hears. Lord, we pray over your word today, Lord, that you would breathe upon it. We thank you for this powerful time of worship where we feel your presence so tangibly here. Lord, we pray that you would speak upon this word and make it alive today, that it would impact us, that we go away from this place changed more into your image, we pray. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now, we've been talking about this theme called Canvas. Today, we have this awesome opportunity. Actually, Miss Kayla is over here, and she is painting. We're going to be talking to her in just a few minutes. Give a hand for Kayla, using her talent for the Lord. Awesome. Uh, and one of the things that I've heard so often is, is a, the comparable to a canvas is skin. And they talk about that idea with tattoos. Now, it's interesting, the tattoos. Obviously, it can be a 
pretty uh, controversial idea. And, and, you know, people take this ink and they, they, they take it and they, they put the, the needles inside the ink and they start to do their artistry. And I don't know if you've ever sat and seen it happen. Or maybe some of you have seen it happen up close. Maybe you've felt it. But it's, it's, a, it's a thing, man. It's a process. And it really is something to behold. In fact, especially when you get the needle out and they start really drilling on somebody, you really start seeing the, the, uh, the art come to life. Would you say that? And people really start to squirm. It's a really interesting thing. And so you have to be very intentional on what art you're getting done when you get a tattoo done. Anybody? And sometimes it's just like life and the decisions we make. Sometimes the decisions that are made for tattoos are not the best decisions. How many of you will know what I'm talking about? How many people might have one of those on their body? Here's the thing, man, it, I, there's like, there's shows and all sorts of stuff nowadays that talk about tattoo cover-ups, tattoo cover-ups, because man, someone made a decision a long time ago, and now that's not such a great decision for a tattoo. Like for instance, maybe you were really, really in love with Andy, and now you, you're not in love with Andy anymore. <laughs> And so they get a tattoo cover up, right? And they, they, they start covering it up. Or maybe you were in love with somebody else. And you definitely shouldn't be in love with this person. You guys got that one? Yeah, that's probably a good idea to cover up just as a concept. And, and see, like, it could be just something that, man, it was really awesome in the 90s. And maybe you're just not into it anymore. You guys know what I'm talking about? Do you guys still have the tribal dragon? Some of you guys still have the tribal dragon. It's fine. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. It's a good decade, the 90s. It's awesome. But man, they, they get in there with that ink and they start really having to, to dig on people because, man, it takes a lot of work to cover up something that's already there. In fact, that's why you see time after time and again, that's why they cover it up with a rose. Because a rose can hide all these other things that were underneath it. It's a dark color and it has a lot of folds and so it can cover a lot of things that were otherwise there. And, and so as they start to draw these roses over the top of these other tattoos, it man, it starts to take something that was really ugly or something that wasn't wanted or even shameful, and it turns into something beautiful again. I think about this in faith because this is what the idea of the sacrifice was for people, is that it covered up the sin of people. It, but it did more than just cover it up. It actually washed away the sin of people. And so when Christ comes to the earth, it's not just to cover up our sin. It's actually to wipe it away clean. It's all those things and all those mistakes and all the guilt and all the shame that's attached to something, the way the person might feel about a bad tattoo. It, it, he does more than that. It's all of our decisions and all of our frailty and all of our mistakes. He washes those things away. And so we talk about canvas. The thing is that God is not done with your story. Keep going with God. He's not done with you. And so as we look at this story today and we start jumping into the story, we actually pick up here in the setting, it's ancient Israel, and we see that story here. It's before King David. It's before Solomon. It's before the great city has been built in the way we think about it in the ancient of days. This is the oncoming of Samuel, the prophet. This is before his story. It's his origin story. And so we pick up here where actually they've been worshiping with a smaller temple at Shiloh. And this is what it would look like in modern day. This is the ruins of Shiloh upon the hill. It's there in northern uh, Israel above Jerusalem. And so you, you can see it today and even where the tabernacle would lay. This is what it looked like in this story. And so this is the setting for what starts to become here. And actually the key character, the first part of this whole story is not actually Samuel himself, but his mother, Hannah. And it picks up with her story actually in 1 Samuel 1. It says, there was a certain man, and here's the thing with being a pastor, guys. There are lots of really complicated names in the Bible. Anybody? You ever stood in front of, I don't know, a group of a couple hundred people and had to say things you don't know how to say them? <laughs> Happened to me right now. There's this guy named Elkanah. I'm going to skip all the other parts. <laughs> and he had two wives, and one was Hannah and one was Penina. And, and so this is the setting with them. And he would go up every year to the hill country, and he would go and he would make a sacrifice. But it gives us a very clear delineation saying that Peninnah had children, but Hannah had no children. Now in this day, this was something that was 
of great shame upon a woman because this was seen as her validity of getting the heritage to go forward. And so there was a great thing tied to this. And, and so for Hannah, this was a place of great heartbreak. And throughout this story, it would talk about how she would mourn this over and over. It picks up in verse 3. It says, This man used to go up year by year to this city to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh, where the two sons, Eli, Hopni, and Phinehas, were priests of the Lord. They would go up to make, make sacrifice there. And on the day that Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to Peninnah, his wife, and to her sons and daughters. He would break out the things that are sacrificed there and give the portions to them. It says, but here to Hannah, he would give a double portion because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival used to provoke her grievously to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year by year. And as often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore, Hannah wept and would not eat. We'll put a pin for a second to start talking about this concept. So Hannah's there. You can see the setting. You have Penina and Hannah. You have the battle between the two. Obviously, both of the wives want to be the most loved wife, right? In this day, there was multiple wives. This is how it was. And so Hannah has no glory to give to her husband in children. And so she mourns this idea every time. Now, he loves her. It says so. And in scripture, it talks about it. He says to her, am I not as good as 12 sons? And, and he starts sharing with her that he really held, heartfelt loves her. But she still had this brokenness inside of her that she wanted these children. And so it becomes this, this place of mourning in, in year after year. Have you ever gone through hurt that lasted for a long time? I think many of us here in the room have had that situation happen. It's the thing where you don't see the immediacy of an answer to prayer. or You walk through a lot of seasons not understanding why it is the way it is. Why am I going through this difficulty? And having a heartbreak that's there attached. Now in her case, she doesn't just have a heartbreak. She also has a woman who's making fun of her every single year for it. Man, it's like salt on the wounds. How many people know what I'm saying? And that makes it so much harder oftentimes. It's one thing to carry a hurt by yourself. Where it's an internal hurt. You're suffering through it. But... You know, it's not an open thing. And then it's another thing to have another person over here openly mocking you for a place that hurts in your life. And man, that, oh, that's, that's a hard one to deal with. And this is the situation. This is the subject. This is the setting for which Hannah finds herself in. In fact, you think about this. He would give her the double portion of all that would be for her. She doesn't just get one portion as, as Penina and the sons and daughters have got. She gets a double portion but she's so distraught with the hurt and the anguish that she's going through, she doesn't even get to enjoy it. And so many times, I think we're in this place where we have all these blessings of God, but we're holding on to this hurt. And so we don't even get to enjoy the blessings that he gives us. Because the hurt is there. And it starts to talk about it here in this narrative. It says in verse 10, she was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall touch his head. You could think of her praying and and trying to, to pray to the Lord and weeping bitterly. Man, so many people I know, they've, they've gone through a hurt or maybe they're carrying a hurt or something that they can't resolve because it's something that maybe happened to them. And they're trying to deal through it and they're weeping bitterly and there's an anguish that's attached to it. Man, it's a deep, deep hurt. And, and see, deep hurts aren't, aren't just simply cut off at surface level, right? At the emotional level. There's something deeper, a deeper work of God has to happen for those things to be uprooted, for the, the hurt to be made whole. And so you hear her calling out to the Lord in, in her truth and in understanding that, Lord, I need you. It says that she went up to the temple and that's where she was praying. And that Eli, who was at this time, was, he was the head priest, he's... He's there before the Lord, but he's an old man. 
And, and so he, he's there and he's seen this all before. It says that she continued praying before the Lord and Eli observed her mouth. And Hannah was speaking in her heart, only her lips moved and her voice was not heard. Any of you guys ever pray like that? Do you pray like that so that other people can't hear you? Is that really why you pray like that? I know people at church are like, you're like, what prayer are you saying? I don't know. It's fine. My mouth is moving. There's no words coming out. No, but she's praying in her heart. There's nothing wrong with that. But the idea is that this is the setting. Now, therefore, Eli took her as a drunken woman. <laughs> okay. You know you've been a priest before God a long time whenever you see the drunk woman coming to pray to God, right? And you think about this. This is Eli said to her, how long have you, are you going to go on being drunk? Put away your wine from you. So upset that you look drunk. This is a problem. Can we admit to this? I mean, you think about this, you think about wine, obviously wine is a, is a positive thing. There's many parallels in, in scripture talking about new wine and, and the blessing, the places that, that flew, was flow with wine and honey. But then you see what he's experiencing where it's like people get a little bit too much wine in them and then they start complaining to God. You ever been around a person, got a little bit too much liquid courage and started complaining to God? It's never happened to you, praise the Lord. Maybe it's happened to someone you were around. Man, I, for years, especially after I became a, a pastor, I was a youth pastor, I would go and see a friend and they'd be like, hey, come to the barbecue. I could only last at a barbecue for like an hour and a half before people get a little bit too deep into the liquid courage, right? And I'm like, I love you, peace, you know, I'm out. But it didn't matter. I would not even be talking about religious things. I'd just be like, oh, that's cool, man. I really like how you're doing this steak. They're like, you know what I think about God? I'm like, oh, here we go. Here it is. Here it is. And they're barely holding on to whatever's in their cup. You know what I'm talking about? They're like, you know what it is? I'm like, you need to put down that red Solo cup right now. You need to drink some water. But here's the thing, like, this is what he's thinking. He's thinking, oh, this, uh, here we go again. We got this lady. She's like up in here praying to God. She's not even praying. She's just doing the actions. I love Hannah's response. She says, no, my Lord. I am a woman troubled in spirit. I neither drank, neither wine, nor strong drink, and I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for all along I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation. Whew. Here's the thing. She is, she is being very transparent in where she's at. She's telling the priest, this is exactly where I'm at. I'm broken. I'm going through this thing. I'm experiencing hev a heaviness and anxiety. And I feel vexed. I feel cursed. I feel like this thing is against me. I heard such an encouragement yesterday. It said, you can't give up more than what God will give back. And I think that's exactly what happened in this situation is that Hannah had to give up this thing that was on her, this hurt that was in her life. She had to be transparent with where it was. It was no longer her burden to carry. She shares it before the Lord. She shares it with Eli. She's there trusting and handing it over to him. And I love that he, he you can't give more than what he'll give back to you. He will give back more. Eli answers her and says, go in peace and the God of Israel grant your petition that you have made to him. I think about this. I think about this as a pastor. I think about how when we pray for people, man, I, we pray in earnest. I pray often for you and for the things that God is doing on your behalf, that he would intercede in your circumstances. And, and I believe it with my heart. We stand in faith and believe. And I think about this with Eli. He sees this woman coming and he thinks one thing about her, but she comes and tells him the truth. I'm really actually going through a difficulty. And so he speaks as the man of God and as the person in that place of authority, he says that the peace of God would be upon her. And he asks that the Lord would give her the desires of her heart. It says in scripture, it continues on in verse 20, it says, and in due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. And she called his name Samuel, for she said, I have asked for him from the Lord. Can you say amen to that? The thing that she had been looking for, the breakthrough that she had looked for and experienced became a blessing to her life. She saw the fulfillment of it. It wasn't immediate. It was something that she had to journey through. 
How many people know? But what she found was the peace of God. And in her case, an answer to that prayer in the form of a son. Now here's the interesting piece. She had pledged that son to God, which means the very thing she'd asked for, she wouldn't get to keep. Because she had said, Lord, if you give this to me, I will turn this this child over to you. And in her day, that means she was going to turn this son over to the priest to be raised as a priest, not in her home. And so this was a thing where it's like, God, you're giving me this blessing, but Lord, I'm returning this blessing back to you, trusting you with it because you gave it to me. And that's the same thing that we see today in the things that he gives us is that every good blessing that comes from God, he is the source. We can give it right back to him. We can trust him with it. If that's, if that's money, we can trust God with that. If it's our business, we can trust God with it. If it's our family, we can trust God with it. Today, as we pray over these children, these parents who have been given this amazing blessing, they're trusting the Lord, saying, Lord, this child belongs back to you. And though God has entrusted them to raise this child and direct this child, they are of their own volition giving over this child back to the Lord, just as he gave that child to them. Just as Hannah does with Eli and gives Samuel to him. Man, what a powerful statement about your trust in God. That he is my source and I will return back to him these things because he will give even more than what I sacrifice. What a powerful statement. What a powerful thing. It's about being obedient. She says this and declares this as she gives the child back. She has this declarative statement, being with child. It says, she said, oh, my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who is standing here in your presence, praying to the Lord. For this I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition that I made to him. And therefore I have lent him to the Lord as long as he is lives, as he is lent to the Lord. And she worshiped the Lord there. She told this to Eli and gave the child back to God. Here's the amazing thing. In her hurt, she suffered alone, but in her sacrifice, she was healed. In her sacrifice, she was healed. We don't think about it like that. We don't think like, oh, we need to give this up. But in her sacrifice, in her worship of God, she was healed. It didn't help her to, oh, woe is me and I am vexed to these things. No, instead in her worship of God, she experienced the breakthrough. Man, that spoke to me because of difficulties that we've gone through and hardships that we go through and things that, man, they want to vex my mind and my heart and keep me up at night. Anybody else? And the word of the Lord to us is in your worship, in your sacrifice, you will find the breakthrough. Man, I'm so encouraged because that's a word for you and a promise to us that we would experience the healing power of God. Hannah, she prays and says, oh, my heart exalts the Lord. My horn is exalted to the Lord. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like the Lord. There is none besides you. There is no rock like our God. We say amen. <laughs> Hannah experienced the full gamut. She went from hurt to healing. From hurt to healing. Today, we get this amazing opportunity to, to dedicate some children to the Lord. Man, what a blessing to be a part of that, of that story and that narrative today. Um, we have a few that are here with us today. I think Amelia is here. Is she here with us today? Awesome. Can we have you guys come forward? Can we have a hand for these that are getting dedicated today? We're so thankful. That's right. Is Alexander with us? I wasn't sure if Alexander's with us. We have two services and they're doing these together. We're excited. Man, what a blessing. What a blessing. Amen. Amen. As these guys stand here before the Lord and we're going to come down and pray for you guys, okay? It says this in Luke 18. It says this to us. It says they were bringing... They were bringing infants to him, to him, to Jesus, that he might touch them. But when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. 
But Jesus called to them saying, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For to you such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of heaven of God like a child shall not enter it. So we're called to be those who bless the children and see the children come to Jesus. We ourselves are called to be those like children who come to Jesus and seek him. Friends, today we first take a charge and a covenant to these parents who are trusted with her. And the covenant to the parents, it comes out of Deuteronomy Deuteronomy 6. It says, these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. It means to live out the word of God before these kids. And so I'm going to ask you a couple questions today, you guys. And if you would just respond with, we do. Do you recognize your child as a gift from God? And do you dedicate your child to the Lord today? Do you pledge as parents that you will bring up your child in the discipline and instruction of the Lord? Do you promise to give your child every possible benefit of home, education, and the church? And do you ask God's blessing upon your child's life to guide, guard, and direct your child today? Amen. Amen. Church, you as well, the congregation, we have a charge to you. And if you would, just respond at the end with, we will. Will you, members of this congregation, be faithful to your calling as members of the body of Christ, so that these children and all other children in your midst may grow up in the knowledge and love of him? If so, say, we will. Praise the Lord. Today, we're going to come and we're going to pray a blessing. I'm going to ask of the family who want to come, anyone who wants to come up and be a part, they can, to come and lay a, a hand. You guys can face the congregation today. But as we, we come and we pray, we believe and ask the Lord's hand upon these lives of these children. We ask that God would bless them and call them to himself at an early age. We believe that each one, each person of us makes our own decision for Christ. But it also means that the heritage that's been here, God sees it and he blesses it. You see the charge is to the parents, but also to you, that she would have every opportunity to experience the fullness of Christ and live in a community of faith that encourages her to grow in Christ. We are called to be those who are an example. And as we pray a blessing today, that it would be something that God honors and manifests in her life. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much. Lord, and today we just pray a blessing, God. Lord, upon your sweet daughter. God, we thank you so much, Lord, for her life. Lord, we pray that you would guide and protect her. Lord, that you would direct her. Lord, you would reveal yourself to her at a young age. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done in her life so far. And we pray, Lord, that you would just reveal your love that you have for her, to her, that she would know that her God loves her so very much. Lord, we ask a blessing upon not just her, but her family. Lord, that you would bless them together. Lord, you would bless them as a family in unity. Lord, we pray that you would guide and direct. Lord, for her, that you would give her wisdom beyond her years and experience. God, that she would also have a revelation of who you are. God, we see, Lord, that you are those who open up our steps. So we say that you would guide our steps and light her path. Lord, in that all these things, just as we hear the story of Samuel, so, Lord, we go with Amelia before the Lord. We bless her, dedicate her today as unto you. We pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Can we have a hand of appreciation for her today and for this wonderful family? Thank you, guys. God bless you guys. We're so very thankful that you're a part of that. Man, what an amazing thing. Can we have a hand, another hand for that church. We're so thankful. Hey, we get a chance to come over here and, and talk today with Miss Kayla about her story. If you want to come over a little bit over here in the light, and we'll talk about your, uh, talk about your painting. Share with us kind of what you're sharing today. Sure. <clears throat> Um, so this painting is based off of 1 Samuel 3. Um, in the message version, the passage is titled, 
speak, God, I'm ready to listen. And this is what Samuel tells God. So in contemplating this story, I thought of an ocean storm. Um, You have this vast journey of potential in the ocean, and then you have this chaotic unknown that comes in the storm. And so I feel like this represents life pretty accurately. Um, So in the midst of the chaotic potential, we have this opportunity to hear God's voice as our navigation to calmer seas and clearer skies. And just because there's a storm, the journey's not over. So that clarity shines through. And so in the painting, um, you can kind of see if you can see it, hopefully. Yeah, you can kind of see it in the camera. Um, There's this big storm over the ocean. And there's this light shining through. And all we have to do is see it and hear it and ultimately follow it by saying, I'm ready to listen. Thank you, Kayla. Wow. I love it, man. I'm so, we're so blessed. I'm so blessed by her gifts and uh, the, the things that God does through her talents and that she would use it for the Lord to share with us today. We're so blessed in that way. You know, we pick up the rest of this story and it picks up here with Samuel, who has been given to Eli to be raised in the house of the Lord. And just for a few minutes, let's take a look at that today. It says, now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At the time of Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, he was lying down in his own place. And the lamp of God had not gone out yet. And Samuel was laying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Now, you can think about this idea, the ark of God. And we've seen imagery of it. Maybe you've seen an Indiana Jones or some such thing. But this is literally, it was something that was made and formed to be the representation in God's presence filled this ark. And it, the, the children of Israel would carry this ark with the presence of the Lord in front of them as they would go. And it rested in the temple here at Shiloh for these many years in this place. And so Samuel as a young boy, or as a boy, he's here and he's getting to experience what this is to be around the presence of God. And to be there in the presence of God and to learn from Eli what it means to be a priest. It picks up in this story and as as Samuel is laying there, it says the Lord called to Samuel and he said, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lay down again. So he went and lay down. Now, it doesn't clearly say in this story how old he was. Now, in my mind, as a parent, I think he was probably a little kid full of energy. Anybody else? Anybody see him, like, have an example of that? You guys got it? Of, like, a kid who's just going and running and going full blast, full of energy. And I think that's exactly who he was. You can't calm that kid down. Anybody else? Especially if you're an old man who can't see, you could only imagine the the work of God that was happening in Eli's life. He was learning patience all the time. Having this little rambunctious dude who's like, here I am, and here I am, and here. He's like, lay down. Anybody else? It's it's time for night-night. Let's go night-night, Samuel. Now, maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was older, but, man, that's how I imagined it to be. it's, uh, It's an interesting idea. And says, the Lord called again Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call my son, lay down again. And you could just imagine this back and forth and what Eli had to be thinking. He's like, this kid, who gave me this kid? What is this kid? You know, what is he doing? Like, I already have grown sons. Like, I have this kid. No, but here's the thing is that God is speaking to Samuel, but he does not recognize God's voice yet. God is speaking, but he's not understanding. He doesn't understand the voice of God. See, so many times God is speaking to you, but you recognize it as a voice of something else. And so often that happens in our life, especially as we continue to mature as Christ followers, is that we start to attune to the voice of the Savior. We start to attune our voice to the voice of the Holy Spirit to hear his voice. We start to listen and hear it and identify it. 
Man, people talk about the still, small voice. That's what that's talking about is the voice of God speaking to us, correcting us, guiding us. You know the one when you start to get mad that's like, you need to calm down. You think that's probably the voice of God trying to get you out of a bunch of trouble or things you're about to do? Or say, man, or other things like, hey, you know, maybe you should pray about that. (laughs) And you're like, I don't know where that thought came from. It's like, well, you think it's the Lord who's trying to give you wisdom before you make a big decision with your life? And this is the same thing that God is speaking, if only would hear him. And that's the same story that we see here. With Samuel, it says the Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he arose and went to Eli. Man, let's give props and congratulations to Samuel for obeying every single time. Can we say that? Man, how many people do you, I know he wasn't a teenager. I know he wasn't that old. Can we admit to that? Because he would like take two, he'd be like, Samuel, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just a lay. No hate, teenagers. We know you're tired. You're tired. It's fine. He arose and went to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. I love this. And Eli said to Samuel, go lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The challenge. God is speaking. So keep listening. Keep listening listening. Keep your ears open to what God is speaking to you. Don't just cut off after the first time or the second time. Keep listening to what God wants to say because he is speaking to you. He's speaking to you. And the Lord came and stood calling at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak for your servant hears. Speak for your servant Hears. I love this. In the first couple times I read through this scripture, I didn't catch it. But it says in this translation, the Lord came and stood. What a powerful idea. That we have, obviously, he's there with the Ark of the Covenant, the representation of the presence of God. But it says that God in his presence came and stood and called out to Samuel. This gives us the same imagery that we would later hear from the words of Jesus about the father looking for the prodigal and calling them to himself. It says he's looking on the horizon and when the sun came, he ran to them. This is the same thing we see here with Samuel that he's calling to Samuel. Today, friends, he's calling to you. Speaking to you and to what God wants to say in your life, in your specific journey, on your specific canvas of a story, he's telling you, he's talking to you, that you would need to keep listening, keep listening. He says, your servant hears. The Lord said to Samuel, behold, I'm about to do a thing in Israel, at which the two ears of everyone who hears it will Tingle. This is what we know is that God is up to something. God is up to something. God is always up to something. If we would only listen, we would know what it is. Man, I'm so encouraged because the other side of it is, are you listening to God? If he's speaking, it, are you listening? That's what we have to do. We have to keep listening, but not just in a way where it's like, okay, I think God's saying something. No, not just that, but the active listener. How many teachers do we have in the room? The active listener. Do they hear you or are you an active listener? There's a big difference, isn't there? Hearing you is like, I understand there is noise coming out of your mouth, right? Charlie Brown teacher. Wah, 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 wah. Active listener is like, speak. I'm listening. I'm listening to the Lord today that you would say, speak your servant hears. As we come to this altar, we have this opportunity to respond to the Lord. And just as we talked about walking with Jesus, that is that same process of going from hurt to healing. So let me encourage you today that you would be one that embraces the healing that God wants to do in your life. 
God is speaking, friends. He's speaking to us. So we have to be those who keep listening. We have to be those who go after and say, Lord, speak, your servant hears, being active as a response to God. Another question that we would have today for those who are here, maybe you're here and you've never made that decision to follow Jesus. Today is your opportunity to do so. And just as we prayed a blessing upon Amelia, just as we, we've heard the word of God come and talking about speaking to Samuel, so he speaks to us. You're like, I wanna know God like this personally. I wanna embrace him personally too. Well, friends, today is that day. It's your opportunity. You have to answer that question. Have you embraced Jesus? See, each of us has, that's what we mean by being on a journey with Christ. To us, the symbol of the cross is one of freedom because it's one where he paid the price on our behalf for all of our sins and for all of our mistakes. Jesus came, as just we talked about, he didn't just cover it up, but he wiped away your sin. And he does so for free as a free gift to you, but you have to accept it. You have to accept his work on your behalf. And we do so in faith. None of us can earn of it. None of us can live a good enough life. It's not possible. It's not possible to give a holy God an unholy sacrifice. So that's why Christ came, so he could be that holy sacrifice for us. It says in scripture in Romans 10, it says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes and is justified. And with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. Friends, today is your day of salvation. It's your day to embrace Jesus and to ask him into your life. I'm gonna ask if everyone would stand here in the room, if you just bow your heads right where you're at for just a moment. Maybe you're here, maybe you're under the sound of my voice and you need to respond to Jesus today. His heads are bowed here in the room and you would just wanna respond with a simple prayer. It goes something like this. Lord, thank you for loving me. And thank you for sending Jesus. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And I believe he rose again. Forgive me of my sins. I surrender my life to you. In Christ's name, I pray, amen. And if that was you today, friends, as people who had their heads bowed here in the room, if that was you, if you just let me know by raising your hand today, just saying, I made that prayer. I see that hand over there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Lord, we give you praise, Lord, for these making a decision to follow Jesus today. Lord, we are so thankful. We have a hand of appreciation, church. We are cheering with you, friends, making a decision to follow Christ. What a powerful decision. Wow. It says that the heavens are rejoicing. The heavens are rejoicing. Let me encourage you that you would reinforce that decision to follow Jesus. We have something we want to give to you and put in your hands so you'd be successful in following after Christ to next steps to see what it means to follow Jesus. We're going to go at this time into a time of worship, an opportunity for you to come to the altar for any that would like to. Maybe you're like Hannah and you've gone through a, a place of deep hurt and anxiety that you would come to the altar and give that over to the Lord. She experienced her breakthrough out of sacrifice and giving it over to God. That you would experience the same freedom and the same healing in the name of Jesus Christ. That we would come to this altar and see the blessing of God be poured forward in our lives. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. Lord, which is so powerful to us. Lord, we are listening. Lord, keep speaking to us. Lord, and help us to hear you. Lord, to be drawn close to your voice. Lord, we know you are speaking to your church. So Lord, your servant hears. Your servant wants to know. So Lord, we ask that you would speak to us today. At the same time, we also ask for healing. Lord, for healing of deep hurts today. Lord, for those that are going through that situation and have been going through it, Lord, we ask for your healing in their life today. Lord, we pray that you would impact them. Lord, that they would get the desires of their heart, Lord, as they align their will with yours. Lord, and they would walk into the future. 
Lord, we pray, Lord, for a blessing, Lord, that during this time, Lord, for all those that take a step forward, that they would find an impactful, powerful God who loves them very much. Pray this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I open this altar to you today. Amen. Church, I just want you to know that God is moving and you don't want to miss what he wants to do in your life. I've had people come to me recently saying, you know, I've never been to church, but I've been tuning in because I know you guys are pastors and they've been listening and they're like, whatever you were speaking just resonated in my heart. And I started sending the link to all my friends and they've been watching it as well. And I just thought, well, sometimes you have no idea where people are and God's wanting to move on your behalf. And so I want to encourage you, listen, listen, be sensitive to God right now. Just make sure that when you are speaking to him, that you take as much time to listen as well to what he's speaking to you because God is on the move and you don't want to miss where he's about to take you. Amen. That's right. Amen. Before we go, let me pray this blessing upon us today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Lord, I pray a blessing upon your church, your people. God, that you would pour out your spirit upon us. Lord, that we would live your love out to those around us, we pray. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Know this, we love you very much here at Cornerstone. God bless you and have a great week.